Welcome back. Welcome back to the show. Now, still to come before 10, intelligence expert and Tory MP Rupert Allison, plus US talk show host Ricky Lake. Now, my next guest is a comic of the cloth. Dermot Morgan. I thought you were going to go for it. Does, does Chris Bonington know about those stairs? I just wondered. You give it a try. I really Yo, you're give my bitch. Sit down, woman. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. Cool bloke. Have you had any knee touching on this show so far? Oh, fine looking woman, Ms. Rosalind. Come on. <laughs> Sit over here, my knee. I knew your parents had no, nothing to worry about there. <laughs> you haven't had the knee touching really You're much. You're very similar I mean. to Father Ted, then, aren't you? Yes. A well, bit dodgy geese. I'm, I'm, I'm based on about, you know, 95% of the clerics in Ireland. <laughs> you know, we had this dreadful gag that was doing the rounds um, in Ireland after uh, all the, the sort of scandals came out about, about uh, priests being involved with. You know, yes. uh, various sexual activities, and and there was the big one was what do you call ten altar boys that the spot prizes at a priest's ordination. <laughs> we, did, we had to stop that stuff because it was no, just absolutely. too bad. It was too bad. <laughs> Maybe that's where you should stop. I'll it, no. Just don't, no, I can go worse. If you don't no, behave yourselves, so. it'll get worse, right? Now just oh. you know, get a grip here. Well, what what do the the, the priests think of it over there? I don't know, and I, I frankly don't give a damn. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know, it's, uh, I survived the, the cliched Catholic uh, Irish upbringing, so uh, whatever they think about it, I can tell them what I think about them if they ever want to know. What do you mean you survived? You started well, off I mean, it's just, it's, uh, you know, uh, to, be, to be dragged up, you know, in, in, in the, the sort of the Catholic ethos is, is it's, it's scary, you know. I mean, it's, it's like sort of moral fascism. I mean, nobody can handle that stuff. You can't, you can't really believe you're going to be damned forever if you do something wrong. Um, I, I, I have to tell you this because it's, it's actually true. Uh, one of the great joys of, of doing TED, though the intention behind it isn't particularly satirical, it's just mm. uh, Arthur Matthews and Graham Lynn and having a laugh. Uh, but for me, one of the, the, the joys, but it's kind of like therapy. It kind of, uh, you know, it's catharsis. It, it gets all that clerical stuff out of, my, out of my head. But I used to take it all very seriously. And when I was uh, quite disgracefully late in my, my teens, all the other guys had, in, uh, you know, experimented with sex, albeit on their own. And, uh, <laughs> and I hadn't. I had not really, tried, no, it was the one thing I was sure was a mortal sin is if you touched yourself. Now, at this stage, of course, I didn't realise the Bishop of Galway was shagging his first cousin. But I was, and I know, you know, and because, you know, my friend would be saying, help me, touch me, all the other boys are touching their parts. I can't, I'm a Catholic. I have no hands, you're going to have to help me. <laughs> Leave me alone, you bastard! <laughs> Please! How can you pull a woman if you can't even pull yourself? <laughs> this is really true. And, and, honestly, and eventually, at, you know, quite late in my life, but 37, not after long, <laughs> I, I succumbed, you know, to the temptation because, you know, he just ordered me. <laughs> I have taken over dual <laughs> controls. So, so, and it happened, I also called it, it happened on a Friday night, and it was just... I, I didn't really know what it was to be damned, to be in eternal damnation. Though, you know, not touching myself was hell up to that anyhow. But so, and then it happened, and it was a wonderful feeling. And then suddenly, oh, shit, no, that's it. If I'm hit by a bus, I'm down. I'm in the old crackly, crinkly place for all eternity. Very hot, no air conditioning. What am I going to do? And, and I'll have to go to confession. And it was a Friday evening. The next time I could go to confession was on the Saturday. There was a Saturday session of confession, which ran from like 11 to 1. So I was sitting there, what am I going to do? Well, you know, well, I'm never going to do this thing again, ever. However, if I was to get caught now or hit by a bus, I'm going down anyhow for eternity. So how many eternities can you do? So I decided I was going to pack in all the self-interference I could. From Friday tea time, I remember this. I was trying to study for exams. <laughs> Flunked that. 
And, <laughs> and I left it to the last confession you could possibly make, which is like one o'clock. And in the, I think I set up a record. <laughs> I really did. A team of paramedics had to carry me into the last confession. <laughs> and it wasn't the last time either. But, <laughs> but, but, but what I'm saying to you is that, you know, imagine doing all that stuff in your head because of the, the priest. So, and at the same time, as say they were doing all this other funny stuff themselves. So is, is that when you put it all behind you? I mean, I'm, I'm talking about the confessional. The, no, no, no. I have no smudge. I mean, no smudge. No, no. Is uh, that when you just put? No, I put think the you're, religion always, you're always it. putting. The, I mean, it's, uh, there's nothing worse than the. Uh, I think one of the newspapers described me as spectacularly lapsed as a Catholic, and you're always putting it behind you, you know, mm. because the guilt thing is they get the guilt early into you, and then you're always being tapped on the shoulder, you know. We'll get you. St. Peter will be waiting, you know, oh, please, no. I'm not. Uh, Brendan Behan, the, the Irish dramatist, just, just said he was a daytime atheist, you know, but come nighttime, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, God, I believe in you. Ooh, turn I, on think, the I think we realise from, from, from listening to you now that you, you, do, you are famous in Ireland for stand up and you do um, uh, hard edged stuff. Yeah, satire, yeah. Yes. That's kind um, of, yeah. yeah, satire. Um, and rumour is you've got, you've got a hit list. No, that sounds a bit frightening. Who's on your hit list? I this, is, this, is, uh, this is propaganda put out by the establishment in Ireland. I, got in, I, I used to do this show called Scrap Saturday uh, with a, f a friend of mine, Jerry Stembridge. We used to do this kind of satirical thing uh, on radio. And it, truly, we used to pick off all the establishment figures. And why the, why the punters loved it at home was because it was the real agenda. In other words, it kind of, it kind of articulated what the spin doctors wouldn't mm. put on. The, like the Bernard Inghams of Ireland were all completely nanted because we were telling it like it was. Right on. Yo, do my thing. Sorry. It's still there. And um, so we, 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 that's, the, I think the, that's where the hit list idea sprung from that we used to pick up. There was a, Charles Hawhey was the uh, Taoiseach at the time. That's the Prime Minister in Ireland. And he was, the more uh, crap we ladened him with, the, uh, that, he, that we ladled on him, I should say, uh, the better he got in the ratings. You know, yes, it's true, I'm a bastard. Well, is it in the way, in the way, <laughs> in the way this, him, yeah. this, this sort of spitting image idea? Though, it was, it? it was like... Yeah. It was like a can, can I just ask you, I mean, I asked this to Lee Hurst a few weeks ago as well, is it hard doing stand-up and when there are desperately um, unhappy issues in the world, I mean, especially with the Northern Irish issue, how can you find things to laugh at when there's all of that? Uh, well, I mean, if the, uh, the, the interesting thing, if you get into a taxi in Belfast, they are... They, they have developed an extremely good black humour, which they have to, you know, and you're kind of, you're in Belfast and you're walking on eggshells, not at all. Uh, a guy told me one there, he said, uh, he said, did you hear about the two provos? He said they, they hijacked the car and it broke down on them, so they got and they hubcapped it. You know, it's kind of a really <laughs> bizarre thing to do, you know. So they don't, I think they, you know, you, you, you can, that is true that you can cope with stuff with, with, with humour, you know, it's like whistling past a graveyard. And, and uh, no, I don't, I mean, there are things, some of that stuff where, where, where priests were involved with altar boys and things like that, you know, that, that did, la laughter was a weapon in that situation. People would make jokes about that in Ireland, and yet if they thought about the individual tragedies of the people who were abused, you couldn't possibly yeah. uh, entertain having a gag about but, it. But it's just a way to, to kind of... Push the bad stuff aside mm. and laughter always oh, well, You've certainly made us laugh tonight. Thank you very Thank much. You much. Dermot Morgan. Yeah.